Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Airy, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado let's go. Today's first story revolves around a husband's discovery of his wife's emotional affair with a co-worker. The couple had a long history, including children, and had been high school sweethearts. After COVID-related stress and his wife's increased workload, the relationship began to deteriorate. The husband noticed suspicious behavior, confronted his wife, and eventually uncovered evidence of the emotional affair through phone records and messages. The wife initially denied the extent of the affair but later admitted to it. The husband considers divorce, seeks advice from online forums, initiates counseling, and starts to take steps toward separation. He also connects with the co-worker's betrayed spouse for further insights. The story reflects the emotional challenges of dealing with infidelity and contemplating divorce after a long-term relationship. Now let's get into the story. My 44 male wife, 43 female, has carried out an emotional affair with the co-worker and admitted as much. I don't have any direct knowledge of physical affair. It has been six weeks since D-Day 1. They are in the same tier of middle management at Regional Hospital. They work closely together along with others of the various departments of the hospital. I confronted her after sensing that something was off and noticing a distinct lack of affection or connection in the prior weeks. About US we are high school sweethearts. We have been together for almost 28 years. Married for almost 21. Anniversary is in early August. We have two children, 13 female and 10 male. We have had an excellent marriage, best friends, never a complaint or even thought of infidelity. We did everything together and loved it. Following COVID and dealing with the obvious stresses of the pandemic. Being that she works in a hospital, patient safety, her safety, our safety, etc. It has taken a toll on her. She took this promotion about 15 months ago. I suggested and recommended to her that she should apply. She was the best internal candidate by far. Once she took the promotion, the extra work came. I was understanding at first, but at a certain point, I could definitely sense that it was a distraction from us. We'd always spend the time after the kids went to bed watching mindless television. But that soon switched to her doing work. I wouldn't have been upset had it not been for the fact that it was always during our time. Some months ago things were turning around at her work. Fully staffed projects. To a point where she was kicking ass. I recognized this and complimented her on this every chance I could sense. Something was off though when she was too busy to schedule our summer vacation further, she was always talking about the affair partner. Initially, I thought nothing of it. In a way, she was making light of a situation in a difficult marriage and contemplated divorce with other betrayed spouse as ours was so strong. A little while later, she disclosed that a fair partner was also pursuing another single mother coworker also in the same tier of management. That didn't pan out. On May 2nd, all talk of a fair partner ceased. This is when things started to feel different. I took notice. Six weeks ago, I saw over her shoulder while golfing a message from a fair partner. That was odd. Later, I confronted her about it explained the dreams, nightmares that I was having that she was having an affair. I broke down hard. She consoled me and assured me that nothing was happening. The next morning, I confronted her about a fair partner again. I brought up the text messages again and she said that she couldn't show me any that she had deleted them. She explained that she knew I would be upset as she was discussing our marriage and her frustrations with me being upset about the extra workload. She couldn't explain what had or was happening. We went our separate ways that morning. She said she was writing down her thoughts. Today, July 15th, I looked through the cell phone bill. On the same morning that she claimed to be alone writing down her thoughts she had a 36-minute phone call with him. Obviously, I didn't know it then but when we talked in subsequent conversations I asked if she spoke with him that morning. She said no. Since then, it's been trickle truths, layers after layers revealed about her true feelings and evidently, some lies. For a while, I was getting past the emotional affair. We were having decent conversations. However, after initiating marriage counseling and having two sessions we determined that she needed time and space to determine why she felt like she needed her independence at this time in her lives. She feels alive with the quality and quantity of work and she knows she is excelling. She doesn't feel connected to me at home. 
Monday after work she told me that she loved me but wasn't in love with me anymore and that she is going to explore this in individual counseling. She had one individual counseling session already this week and following that appointment she said that the therapist stated that people can fall out of love and that she needed to validate her feelings. Wayward wife validated in session and tearfully admitted again that she is not in love with me anymore. Wayward wife isn't sure if she wants reconciliation or not. She said that she needs more time. She doesn't know how reconciliation would work. She also doesn't know how divorce would work either. We are comfortable in our small town. Nice house, two great jobs, good support systems. But she only has her dad advanced onset of Alzheimer's and I only have my mom. Both their spouses passed five years ago, another inextricable bond of trauma. I love her dad and know what hell it is going to be caring for him. My mom knows wayward wife only as her fourth child, as our families were very close through the years. My siblings and their families love her. Since Monday's bomb, I've been 180 and gray rocking to decent effect. She still says good night and goodbye, which I acknowledge but don't reciprocate directly. No I love you. She's been sleeping in the basement since Monday. I know she's crying herself to sleep. I separate myself and read on the porch in the evenings before retiring to bed. The kids are picking up on the signals too. I start individual counseling in 10 days or so. I need advice. Should I share the screenshot with timestamp of the I'm writing down my thoughts on June 4th as well as the cell phone record that shows the call timestamp and duration? I don't know how it will damage my 180 gray rock work. If I should wait, I need to know why I should hide this information and for how long. Or wait until the next confrontation. Not initiated by me. Was the call on D-Day a cover your ass call? Was it a breakup call? Was it a let's change how we communicate call? I don't know what I'd do with the information, but I've been considering divorce in light of this new information today. Thank you for reading this far. I found this sub this week and have been reading since Monday night. I'm sorry to all the other betrayed spouses here, and I'm grateful to know that I'm not alone. And I hope that you know that you're not alone either. It's been hell. Let's see what the comments had to say about this situation. Carp Grinder starts us off. Don't wait to get in touch with a divorce attorney. Update first. Thank you to everyone who replied and gave me advice or recommendations. Everyone's support via reply or DM has been helpful. Here is an update Friday came and went without any conversation. She wept herself to sleep, and I was somehow able to get a few hours of sleep in the meantime. Saturday morning was tense. At some point we were in the bedroom together, getting ready for the day, and out of nowhere she said I know we need to talk. I'm just not sure when is appropriate and how. She came in for a hug. The first in about a week. I replied that it was her choice on the conversation and reciprocated the hug. We broke the hug eventually and no further physical contact ensued. We took a few steps apart and she started to speak. After a few bullshit sentences I was sensing it was my time and best opportunity to bring in my evidence about the call to a fair partner on the morning of D-Day. I demanded to know what the content of the conversation was. I demanded to know the physical level of their emotional affair. When I brought this all to light, wayward wife had a mini breakdown. She dumped what would end up being half-truths about the situation. It had gotten physical, but only kissing once, nothing else. The call was to discuss what they were both feeling. I was livid. I was livid. I continued to press the one kiss turned into four times. Then to I don't know, I don't keep track of it. Finally, to multiple times weekly I asked her if I needed to take any STI tests to which she was visibly shocked and replied no. I pressed her on this multiple times and throughout it was always a defiant no. I'm inclined to believe her on this one. I was able to eventually take her phone and to confirm that everything had been deleted. There were no texts, already expected this and to check other apps like Messenger. That was the new channel to communicate, she admitted. We had more conversation and arguments about these new truths and it was clear in this moment that she had no intention of breaking the affair off and that she was in love limerence with the affair partner. Whether she could answer that or not when I asked. During the heat of the moment, I sent a message to the other betrayed spouse and introduced myself along with providing my phone number. She has to me yet again. Wayward wife flipped out, not because I sent a message to a stranger but because I was blowing up a fair partner's bubble too. I told Wayworth wife that she was no longer welcome in her house and that she would have to stay at her father's while the kids stay with me. She didn't fight that. She offhandedly said I was kicking her out. I replied that that is what she wanted anyway. 
This was the beginning of her desired separation, but it was on my terms and my call to make. We told the kids the basics of why she was leaving, but no details about the affair. Our son broke down many times throughout the day. Once we told them. So sad. I have placed a call to our recommended attorney. It's the weekend, so I don't expect a call until Monday. Set up a consultation and see where we go from here. Wayward wife has not gotten better at concealing anything. She called rather than FaceTime or messenger call, so I have additional records of them being in touch with one another. She also started looking at Zillow listings in our area. Anything she favorites comes to my inbox as well. As we had that sharing set up from our past. I have also spoken to the other betrayed spouse at length. This morning she was blindsided. I provided a timeline. It synced with a fair partner's story. It synced with a fair partner's story. I provided the details that also synced up. Or they corroborated their stories to hide the sexual stuff. I don't know. A fair partner was kicked out of his home too. Her children hate him now. They're much younger than mine. It's all a disaster. I'm not going to inform HR. I don't want to jeopardize the dissolution process and any favorable outcomes for me and the kids by getting her fired. Her mother had a history of deep depression. Wayward wife also has suffered from depression and anxiety over the years. She isn't thinking clearly, but it is too late for that now. I'm afraid she will only come crawling back once she realizes a fair partner is just as messed up. I'll be okay. I have a great family and support structure in town, great job and an amazing boss who is aware of the basics of the issue as I confided in him Thursday. It will hurt, and I know there will be much more difficult times ahead. But for now, I'll keep up with my running and exercise. Thanks for reading. Thanks again for any insight or further recommendations. Appreciate it. I found this article very helpful and the site content was very good too. Now let's get into today's second story. Today's second story revolves around a woman who inherited money after her mother's passing. She is concerned about her husband's spending habits, as he's been looking at expensive purchases despite their financial situation. The husband has a history of being irresponsible with money and has even drained their accounts by giving money to his family members. The woman wants to use her inheritance to secure a stable future for her children and is worried that her husband might spend it recklessly. She considers opening a separate account to manage the money responsibly. In the update, the woman expresses gratitude for the advice received and shares her plan to take control of the situation by seeking legal and financial advice and considering divorce. She acknowledges her past mistakes and is determined to ensure her children's well-being. The story highlights the complexities of family dynamics, financial responsibility, and the importance of making informed decisions. Now let's get into the story. AITA for not wanting my husband to have access to my inheritance? My mother passed away last year and the entire process is about to come to an end in just a few weeks. For the past six months, my husband has been looking at a multitude of things that on a regular day we definitely can't afford. He'd have to use credit or save up for weeks or months. A person can wish for stuff or want to work towards a treat for themselves. But he hasn't made an effort to save up for these expensive purchases. Instead, he's been asking for updates on the legal process and asking how much longer it's going to take. He's even asked me several times about an estimated amount. I've given him very little to no information because at this time, things can still drastically change for the creditor popping up and saying that money is owed or etc. He's not the most responsible person with money. I've managed to finances full time for the past three years straight. He used to manage our finances, but he has a history of sabotaging our financial goals and blowing our budgets. My intention is to use half of my inheritance to move our family into a house and save 40% to help my children in the future like graduations, college trips, their first cars, etc. And have a small emergency fund. Something we couldn't do before this because my husband kept giving his money to his side of the family to help them with bills, grocery, legal troubles, etc. Draining our accounts and leading our family to homelessness three separate times. I understand that if it's family, you have to try and help somehow. Letting your three children and wife become homeless because an adult family member couldn't be responsible enough to pay their own bills or got into legal trouble is a hard thing for me to fully understand. I really don't want to wake up one day and find out that every cent has been spent behind my back. 
I'd like to open an account in my name and follow through with the plan I mentioned above. He has made it clear that he intends to buy a new vehicle, tech, game system and other items just for him, not our children or to improve our family's future. When I talk about investing or saving, he says that life is too short for that. I told him that it wasn't about us, it was about our children. And his response was that when our children become adults, they should work for what they want. That statement seems backwards considering his actions as of late. I know for sure that if his parents pass, we will have to pay off their debt and cover all the unknown costs out of pocket. Financially speaking started my marriage with my husband completely debt-free and I've worked for years to finally get him to be debt-free as well. But over the past 10 years, he's paid off his parents' credit card and IRS debts. They live paycheck to paycheck and think saving money is pointless. I'm not sure if I'm making the right choice, but I really just want my children to have the same happy and stress-free childhood I had. Update. Thank you to everyone who gave me the advice I needed. My mom was the only person I trust. It enough to ask for advice on serious issues. Thanks for the awards and giving awards to those who gave me sage advice. I wasn't expecting any response and I post to be buried by more interesting ones, maybe five at most. Some people ask questions that I would not like to address. On the off chance that my husband, his family, or friends find this, I would like to keep those details to a minimum so I can have the time I need to ensure that my children will be properly cared for and safe. You're all correct was a shit parent in the past. I was too focused on making the money for our financial goals and not paying attention. I was too trusting without doing my due diligence for that bit. I can accept responsibility and fight tooth and nail to make changes to be a better person and parent for my children. I spent two days lining up appointments for the first week of October, when I know I have time alone to handle everything privately. I found a divorce attorney, a financial advisor and a bank that's a bit out of the way. I also made an appointment to visit the firm handling my mum's estate to find out what my options are with them. Everyone was correct about their assumption that I live in the US. That's the most I can say. Some things to clarify I truly am unsure of what kind of financial ties my husband has created with his family members. That's why I said that if his parents pass, I'm sure there will be debts to pay, but I'm definitely not going to be around long enough to finance it. A lot of people ask how I could be with him and he wasn't like this while we dated and after we got married. I probably started midway through my fourth pregnancy with our now firstborn. It made sense that all of the trouble we faced just to have a child could have drained us, I believed, because we kept all of our bills paid and filed away. My binder of medical bills was three inches thick, from my first pregnancy to the day our firstborn came home from the NICU. With that in mind, I just accepted it as a blanket reason for everything. Each time, he would reopen that wound about how expensive it was for all of that, how it's going to be more expensive the next time. I purposely had a birth control procedure done after I had a near-death experience with my last child. I did it for health and moral reasons. I never told him about the procedure. I'm still with him because my situation isn't so cut and dry. I had to dig our family out of a hole and got an apartment. I tried to create as much stability as possible to focus on my mum. All of this came around the time I was taking care of my mum from the day I first took her to the hospital last year. I had to table it until now. And that was the end of Opie's post with no further updates as of yet. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below.